I'm about to go up for the Lord. I'm about to give it all to God. I'm taking back what the best of We're about to get in full control. Let's go to the devil's camp and get what he stole from us. I got a whole stress rolling. Come on and get on the bus. Put your work clothes on. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Wartime with Apostle Deanna Dixon, and we have a great show for you today. But I have two guests. So, welcome, Prophet Wilson Rice, to the show, please. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me. All right. And also, our second guest is Prophetess Elysia Rice. Good morning, and I'm happy to be here. All right. So for everyone that's listening, the first thing I want to do is give glory to honor and God by actually quoting Matthew 6.33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness, and then everything else should be added unto you. Folks, let me tell you something right now. We have to seek God above um, fame, money cars it does not matter we have to bring this nation back to god by the glory of god by the power of god by the healing of god by the fire of god by the anointing of god and the only way we can do that is by surrendering it to god with our whole heart mind body and soul god said that the church came in power and that we are leaving with power so this hour right now i'm sorry actually half an hour in wartime show we want to talk about spiritual warfare that there are two kingdoms in this season the end time the line is being drawn said the lord so i'm going to ask prophet rice what do you say and what do what is god telling you in this hour about spiritual warfare go ahead sir please well the one thing that i'm beginning to learn about spiritual warfare is number one it's definitely real um Many times when you're trying to do God's will and, well, maybe I shouldn't say trying to do God's will, when you're doing God's will and when you're seeking to get better, like you said, seek ye first the kingdom of God, the enemy is going to try to stop you at all costs. Uh, we see that even with the, uh, the story of Joseph. Joseph had a calling on his life and the enemy did everything to try and discourage him, to try and keep him from getting to what was already written. And if God says it, then that's all there is to it. So spiritual warfare is real because the enemy does not want us to uh, satisfy what God's will is in in this season or any season. Praise God, praise God, give him glory. All right, Prophet Celestia, what is your, um, what is God saying to you in this hour about spiritual warfare, please? Well, basically, it's time to step up. It's time to be open and blatant about our commitment and our willingness to do God's will. Uh, there's so much going on in the world now that we really have to be tied in to God and exactly what he's saying to us, opening our ears and our hearts and our minds to listen, to use discernment, major, major use of discernment in order to know the true, true message of God and what he wants for us to do. Praise God, praise God, God, give him glory. So that is so great. And one of the things that I want to talk about is he says, I leave you a new commandment to love one another. What we're seeing is a hard heart in this hour, rage, anger, pride, obedience is the key. So what I want to ask you, you are both actually in the educational field. Um, Prophet Rice, you actually work at a local college here and you, Prophet um, Elise, you actually work with the middle um, school. So what I would like to ask you is, our children are the future. How are we going to get this generation? They call it the X generation, but I just call it, we have to do a little extra. Come on somebody, hallelujah. So I wanna ask you, Prophetess Alicia, in the school system, we're seeing more things happening like um, bullying, fighting. What are we gonna do as far as praying and bringing in back the word of God? Now, I know it hasn't come back in full blown as far as legally, but spiritually, when you get up and you're going to your job, how are you prepared to actually do what God has called you to do in the educational field? Well, first of all, given that they say that they've taken prayer out of the schools, I've never really firmly believed that anyone can ever take prayer completely out of any school, out of any place, out of any person. We can pray as educators, as parents, as students. 
I've even had students to come and ask for prayer or either they've come in and prayed for. So it's not that it's out of school, but we need to stand strong and stand firm in our prayer life and continue to pray for those children. Pray over the buildings, pray over the classrooms, pray over the teachers, pray over the administrators, pray over everyone that enters into the building, even the visitors that come, yes. that they may bring a, a spirit of love and, con and compassion and care and concern, taking time not to come in trying to break down the students or break down the system, not you know criticizing constantly on what's going wrong, Look for those things that are going right and magnify those things and be grateful for those things that are going right and just have more of it going on. Because our children need to have positive role models, positive conversation around them, not things where they're being cut down or talked about on a regular basis. Encourage them. We just have to continue to encourage them. That is a beautiful answer and actually um, very well spoken because that's what we need encouragement in this hour. And I love the way you said praying over the buildings, praying over the people. You know, that's what God was showing me. We have to we have to start to gird like never before. You know, we have to stand in um, actually in the gap for our children, our system. I'm talking about from the community, um, police, whatever office and definitely in our education system. So Prophet Rice, can you actually piggyback? off of that answer please well one of the things that uh i see based upon what she just uh, responded to is that we've got to even in our homes even before the children get to school we gotta instill mm -hmm. the fear of god in our children where they want to pray before they go to school and even the parents need to take some time that when they're getting ready pray over their children pray with their children but once again in this time in society we're living in, we as a people, and I mean anybody who is a believer in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we have to understand that God says if we ask anything in Jesus Christ's name, he'll give it to us. We have to allow ourselves to not be bullied by the enemy who tries to keep us from doing what God's will is mm -hmm. in this season right now. Oh, praise God. Give him glory. That is great. Thank you so much for that. Now, also, I want to touch base on why they are not teaching. And I'm talking about they, so we're not going to. Um, the church need to come back to biblical application, says the Lord. You know what Jesus beat the enemy with? The word of God. So the word has to go forth. He said, it is written. Every time he was coming against, come on, somebody, anything that was happening, he said, it is written, Satan. So I want to ask you something. Why do you think the pastors um, all over across the nation, all over the world, that they're, uh, I just have to go here, they're actually getting their sermons from, let's say, the internet or something like that, or entertainment spirit. We have to go back to preaching the word of God. So what can we do also to influence our churches that we need to talk about the end times. We need to talk about martial law. We need to talk about new world order. We need to talk about obedience. But most of all, we need the word of God. It is the word that heals. It is the word that cleanses. It is the word that delivers. It is the word of God. So, Prophet Rice, what do you think that we can actually apply to influence people to actually get back in their Bible? Because that's what's happening. We're seeing more opinions, but we're not seeing Bible teaching. Well... One of the things I can say for myself, growing up as a young believer in Christ, one of the things I know myself personally, I used to do, when things didn't make sense to me, even though I wasn't a Bible scholar per mm -hmm. se, one of the things I would always do, I would always open my, I would always open my Bible and just read to see if I'd get answers. Um, because I was really seeking God, okay, help me with whatever my uh, issues are. And the thing that used to crack me up is my, when my father was alive, he used to say that I, he always noticed that I would go in the Bible and at least look for answers. Even though I may not find the exact answer, it was just the fact that I was seeking God. And that's part of what your theme is. Seek God because God will give us answers. If we just pray and ask him to give us answers, guidance, or direction, he'll, he'll give it to us. And, and um, I just want to say this to you. I was just reading last night. Because the, the spiritual warfare is real. Last night, some things were happening. And the enemy was trying to mess with me. 
But here's the thing that I always remember is Jeremiah 29, 11 and 12 and 13, which says the following. First of all, Jeremiah 11 says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Verse 12 says, Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. And 13 says, And ye shall seek me and find me, then, then ye shall search for me with all your heart. I think that's really the key. We got to really just seek God with all our heart. And he'll give us whatever it is we need to survive whatever comes our way. Oh, that's powerful. Thank you so much. Prophet Alicia, yes. can you pick it back off of that, please? Wow. That is a very strong um, scripture to, to, to rely on and, and grasp hold of. Um, and this time... I know that, I guess I go back to just that speaking life. Mm -hmm. We've got to continue to speak life over each other, over our nation, over our children, over everything that we do. Even like speaking life over the program today. It is our prayer that the words that we share and the concerns that we express, first, that they're all coming from God. And that we're asking that God continue to incline his ear to us and hear our, our cries, our concerns, our pains, our sorrows, our weaknesses, our needs. There's just so much going on. And we've just got to rely on him completely, completely. But continue to lift each other up. Yes. Because we serve a God of love. God is just total, complete love. Even in his uh, encouraging us or redirecting us, he's doing everything in love. In his correction, he's doing it in love. There is one ultimate outcome is that we all seek him and accept his, his will for our lives and accept his son as our savior. He totally acted in complete love when he gave us his son. Yes. Totally. Yes. So that's where we need to turn. Yes, yes. Thank you so much. And that is, remember when I read, a new commandment I give you is to love one another. That's one yes. of the things I tell people all the yes. time. Yes, You yes. know, and I have to go here, you know, this is a called a wartime show, so we're warring against the enemy. Mm -hmm. um, everyone needs to understand, we have one enemy. We are not each other enemy. I see a lot of people say haters. I hate that word, especially coming yes. from a Christian. Yes. There is no hater. Now there is a spirit that may be used. You know, the enemy may use your brother and your sister against you. But that's an enemy. The spirit of the yes. enemy. And so God, he beat everybody. Let me tell you something. We brought the disciples together. He was disciplining. So the root word for disciple is discipline. We have to come back to understand that one faith one, one word, word, one baptism, baptism. one body. Yes, yes, and if yes. we start fighting, I'm talking about not each other, but come with love. The bottom of everything is love. Just like you said, God is love. Everything. So the only way that you can actually fight an enemy is with love. Because guess what he says? Vengeance is mine, said the Lord. Mm -hmm. But he was moved with compassion. So that same compassion is the same grace and mercy that we have to extend to each other. And it starts with that. That's why our children are so angry. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Yes, yes. Because they're seeing the adult's anger. Mm -hmm. I have never seen it. And I'm very, very transparent. Mm -hmm. As adults, as Christian adults, I pray that we find love forgiveness that's what moves the power of god the, the apostles were so Absolutely. anointed because they were moved with love now yes. we do have to correct inspect and check mm -hmm. but the thing is love, love. love. all right prophet love. rice i need you to talk about how can we do this i'm talking about offer love to one another what are the elements that we as a church can come back to because there's so much bickering in the church right now i'm seeing things that i've never seen before so how do we do this? What does God say? What does God say to you? Well, I the one thing that I'm hearing in my spirit right now is forgiveness. That's right. And when I say forgiveness, I mean, all of us have, we've gone through different challenges as we grow older, as we go to work, as we go to school, as we try to pay bills. And sometimes what we must do is we have to forgive. In other words, anything that is alt in our heart, 
-hmm. We need to make sure that we say, okay, Lord, take this away from me. Lord, take this this resentment I may have towards a, a cousin or a mother or a father or, or even, even a classmate. You have to forgive because the Lord says, the Lord lets us know, even in uh, Mark chapter 11, one of the things he told his disciples, if you have any alt in your heart, he says, forgive. Okay, even when you're praying, forgive. Now, if the Lord took the time enough to tell you to forgive when you're praying, how does he want you to operate any other time? How do you want your prayers answered if you can't forgive? And that's a real strong, I mean, I, I hope everybody, if you get a chance, go back and read Mark chapter 11. Matter of fact, read the entire chapter because that's when Jesus cursed the fig tree. And even Peter was like, ooh, look, you cursed this fig tree, Lord. And then he was like, have faith in God. And then he taught, telling us that we can receive things if we ask in Jesus' name. But at the same time, when you pray, forgive. That's right. And that's where we need to be in this time, this society right now. Oh, great, great, great. Um, Prophet Alicia, can you pick it back off of that, please? Wow. <laughs> that's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Forgiveness is, is definitely key. Um, and forgiveness is something that we can all tap into for the little things, the big things. Uh, one that sometimes I even struggle with is sometimes the forgiveness of self. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's good. Yes. Because if you can't forgive yourself for your mistakes or your mishaps or you know, uh, that moment of misjudgment, mm. you really have to forgive yourself before you can really understand the fullness of forgiving somebody else. Yes. Preach that, sister. And uh, our children have to learn this. But just as uh, it has been written in many books, they live what they see. Mm -hmm. And they learn from that. We have to be those role models. Mm -hmm. It's not an easy task because there's some really evil things done to us at times. Mm -hmm. There's some really hurtful, deeply hurtful things that are done. But we still have to remember that we've got to forgive. Yes. God was the prime example. He forgave us. That's right. Through Jesus Christ, He yes, forgave he did. us. Yes, He did. He gave up His own comfortable seat in heaven and came down to be among us yes. and forgave us even though we were doing wrong 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 big time wrong <laughs> but if he could forgive us for all of those many 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 <laughs> things yes. we can certainly step back and forgive ourselves forgive each other forgive our uh, leaders, uh, nation, for things that have run amok, and just pray that the final outcome will be one that is totally focused on just God and His love for His creation. Mm -hmm. He's going to take care of it all. Yes. In whatever means necessary, <laughs> by any means necessary. So, you know, thank God for the floods. Thank God for the fire. Mm -hmm. All of it is cleaning and cleansing and purging. Yes. And I pray that we just endure the, the pain of the moment, but see the salvation of the end. That's it. That's it, sister. Oh, God bless you. God and bless you. I, I want to yes. also um, actually go a little further. I was molested when I was 12 years old. And I, I guess a lot of people have that story, molesting, I mean, all kind of things. Mm -hmm. One of the things when I got saved, God said, you got to forgive him. I mean, I did. I mean, I even, when he came to my home, I said, you know, you want anything to drink? And it was an authentic forgiveness. Because you see, we have this little saying, I'm going to forgive you, but I ain't going to forget. No, you have to forget it too. Mm -hmm. Because guess what? That's yes. what God does. I'm going to give you the same grace and mercy that God gives us every day. So I forgive you. And I think that's where it starts because that's where unforgiveness and then that comes hate and, and anger and rage and pride. And now you got all kind of other spirits working there. So it starts and it ends with forgiveness. I forgive you. I love you through Jesus Christ. That's that love. That's that agape love. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. That's that agape love that needs to come back into the church and in the homes and everywhere. 
everywhere. So I just thank God for that. But Prophet Rice, I, I, you got something to say, sir? I, I'm so glad that you said that because I've had to live that situation. I had a friend of mine a long time ago when I was in my teens. He did something very, very demeaning to me. But you know how God operates. I had to forgive because I came back later on in life. I had to actually be a friend mm -hmm. to his son. And this is somebody who did something, I mean, just destroyed my reputation and destroyed my uh, belief in myself. But then God allowed me, because I got that out of my heart, I was able to be uh, friendly to his son and yes. be able to encourage him. So That's good. That's good. And that's what it's about. And now the last thing I want to talk about is obedience. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. That is one that... You have to be obedient. And I had to learn that. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Yes. We learn to be obedient. How do we yes, learn? Through yes. test, trials, tribulations. And like you said, by any means necessary. Yes, because he will allow. Yes, you know, Lord. and I, I want to be very clear. God does not do bad things, people. God does not do bad things. However, he will allow yes. it. Because you remember Job, he said, mm -hmm. say, you can go ahead and test him, but touch not his life. Come on, somebody. There hallelujah. You so you will be tested. Yes. You will be yes. tried. Yes. Oh, my God. Yes. But I want to talk about obedience. How do we learn to obey God? I mean, what? And it's, everything's a process. But how? What can you do besides reading your Bible, going to a faith-believing church, a Holy Ghost-filled church? Let me say that, because this is a process. Because a lot of people, we can talk it in church, we can say hallelujah and all this other stuff. But you know, when you really have to live it, when you leave church. So, Prophet Alicia, one of the things that people can do to get closer to God, have a relationship, a real one. And learn to obey his word, his commandment. Wow. Uh, this, um, I'm still studying and I'm still learning. But there's the scripture that refers to dying to self. Mm -hmm. Amen. We have to die to self daily. Moment by moment. There are things that the I want to do, I want to, I want to, I want to, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. will come up all the time. But now we have to die to self and look to God and ask, is this your will? And then listen. Sometimes it may mean waiting or being patient mm -hmm. to hear truly from God, look for confirmation, mm -hmm. and it will come. Boy, will it come? <laughs> so that I think that was that's one key thing to obedience. And trust me, it's like a child trying a parent. <laughs> we, we're all still those children. It's like you see that candy over there on the table. You want that candy, <laughs> and you know you it's right there and it's not moving away from you. If anything, it looks like it's getting closer to you. <laughs> but you gotta say. You know, mommy said no, daddy said no for right now. Mm -hmm. And if you just wait, he may give you the whole candy and some more. <laughs> <laughs> so you've got to just be patient and be strong, prayerful. That's it. Just prayerful. That's it. Prophet Rice, your take? Well, one of the things that I'm beginning, I'm learning more and more. We have to renew our minds. That's daily. right. That's right. In other words, mm -hmm. we have to every day when we wake up, Lord, help me to do things your way and your will, and um, not my will, but your will. That's the thing, we we pray the Lord's prayer all the time. It says, "Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done." So it's all about God. Help me to be able to do those things that are your will, and help me to stay faithful to you. And you know, temptations will come, but at the same time. We, got, we have to continue to be prayerful at all times. Yes. And I, if I may, I have to share one thing. that This came up in a memory from last year. It says, in this season, ask, seek, and discern the will of God. Read Romans 12, 1 through 2 is one thing I reference. And it says, you must allow, uh, you must allow no one to deceive you. Be vigilant. And pray and seek the Lord, seek God for the truth in Jesus Christ of Nazareth's name.
Oh, amen. Praise God. Thank you so much for that. Yes. Prophetess Alicia, I see you have something to share. <laughs> uh, it's a prayer that I wrote and reaffirmed um, twice. It simply says, Lord, speak plain and clear. And I'm going to put in our where it's my. Open our eyes to see clearly your will and the task that you, that I must do, we must do. Open our ears to hear clearly your voice, your word, with complete understanding. Open our heart to feel your continuous presence in all that we do through you, that you do through us, for us, and to us. And last, open our mouth to share what you would have us say. Praise God. Amen. Give him glory. Amen. 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 And all of this reminds me, mm. do you remember when, well, we don't remember, but we can recall from the Bible, when Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane, and he says, you know, if, if I wish this cup would pass for me, and the Bible says that he was actually sweating blood. Now, I don't know about you. I've never sweated blood. So that means he was intensely um, just moved about, okay, I got to go ahead and do this. But I remember the thing that keeps me and in my spirit, and, it, and I pray that it encourages you as well. He said, but nevertheless, that means, God, I want to serve you. And nevertheless, thy will be done. Yes. And I think that's what it is. We have to come back to whatever it is, God, whatever you want. Keep me, God. And so I, I want us to actually close out with a prayer and a, a prayer that actually I want to touch everybody with this prayer in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So let's just all hold hands if you don't mind touching the green. Praise God. Hallelujah. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we just come to you, Father God, boldly to the throne of grace, God. Just thanking you, first of all, just being thankful. Oh, hallelujah. We thank you, God. We give you honor and we give you praise. Everybody that's in the sound of our voice, Father God, whatever they're going through, Father God, mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally, financially, Father God, touch them, Father God. You say, when the two shall touch and agree, I touch and agree. God, hallelujah to his name. Oh God, yes, we need you in this hour like never before, Father God. The yes, power of God is still real. The power of God is still real. The fire of God yes, is still real. Yes, Healing and deliverance is yours, said the Lord. Just ask. He just asked. He said, if you believe, you should receive. Oh, Father God, I just ask you right now. Oh, Father God, heal our nation, our schools, our community, our marriages, Father God, our friendships, Father God. Love, Father God. Oh, teach them to love one another, God. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and I plead the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah to his name. Oh, let us all touch and agree one more time by saying yes. amen, 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 and amen. amen. God bless you. This has been Apostle Deanna Dixon in the show War Time. God bless you.